Good day class. Today we are going to have a short discussion about uh, neuromuscular function and what fade is with the introduction of non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. So let me orient you to this uh, figure. Up top we have the capillary which is in close proximity to the presynaptic nerve that's going to innervate the motor end plate. Okay, so we've got the capillary, presynaptic nerve, and the motor end plate. Now, what you see here are pseudocholinesterase enzymes what you see here is the true cholinesterase enzyme. What you see here is the nicotinic muscle receptor. What you see here is the nicotinic neuronal receptor with the voltage-gated calcium channel. And you also see vesicles filled with acetylcholine. Now I understand that this is a very simplistic diagram but I hope it does the job in giving the fundamental idea behind fade. So let's inject the patient with a non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocker. Okay, so we get these molecules that come in, right, and they're going to be labeled X. Right? And what they do is that they attach to the nicotinic muscle receptor and they only need to attach to one of the alpha subunits. All right? But they also bind to the nicotinic neuronal receptors. Okay? When they bind to the nicotinic neuronal receptors, they block that um, positive feedback mechanism that we discussed in our other vignette previously. Now when that depolarization uh, occurs with the presynaptic nicotinic neuronal receptors, you remember that the voltage-gated calcium channel is open to allow the next round of vesicles to fuse to the presynaptic membrane and be ready for the next stimulus. Okay, now we have the neuromuscular blocker on board, okay, as depicted by the X. So let's do our first twitch, okay. Right, the first twitch. First twitch comes down, right? The action potential is received. And when that happens, this voltage gated calcium channel, right, senses this voltage from the first twitch and opens up. So that calcium comes in. Okay, that calcium comes in and it releases the vesicles that are right here ready to go along the membrane. Okay, those vesicles get released. All right, and the reason I'm taking these away is so I don't have to redraw the synapse. So now the, ves the vesicles that were here are now released and now you've got the acetylcholine molecules that move into the synapse. Okay, so this is the first twitch. Let me go over this again. The first twitch on your monitor because you're going to do a train of four stimulation. So you hit the button, this is that first round of electrical stimulus. The action potential is sensed by the voltage gated calcium channels. When that happens, 
you have a round, a quantum of vesicles released, and now you have acetylcholine in the synapse, which is competing now with the non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocker. So here we are. The acetylcholine that's here, this is the first twitch, may be sufficient enough to get a full response. Right? If you have enough of the acetylcholine, now you can displace this non-depolarizer with two molecules, the same over here. And you're also competing here, but you're competing in this instance, this simplistic instance at four different sites, but in reality, you're going to have th thousands upon thousands of receptors, both pre and postsynaptically. You're going to have thousands of molecules, and so now the acetylcholine may be sufficient to give you that first twitch in your train of four but you're competing with this non-depolarizer, all right? And since you're competing with that non-depolarizer, you may not displace enough of the non-depolarizer to promote the positive feedback to allow the next round of vesicles to be ready to go with the next electrical stimulus. And so when that happens, all right, if you have less of a response presynaptically because you are fighting with the non-depolarizer, you send another twitch downrange, right? Well, I say downrange, but I mean down the neuron. Okay, so now you may release less acetylcholine into the synapse. Okay, so we're going to assume that we release the vesicles that were ready to go, but remember, there's going to be less of them. Because previously, we had the acetylcholine competing for these presynaptic and these postsynaptic sites. In addition, that acetylcholine had to also <laughs> stay away from the pseudocholinesterase. So after that first twitch, the response becomes less and less and less because of the competition at the presynaptic nicotinic neuronal receptor. That positive auto, that, that positive feedback mechanism is inhibited. So with each successive twitch on the train of four monitor, you will see less and less of a response. For example, first twitch maybe, second twitch, their twitch and you may not even get anything on that last twitch and so if you remember let me erase this if you have something if you have a uh, device to measure the magnitude of the train of four that first twitch, right, this is going to be percent response, okay, and this will be time, of course. So you hit that first twitch, right, you may see that full response. You've had the depolarization of the voltage, or the depolarization presynaptically caused by that electrical stimulus open those voltage-gated calcium channels and cause the release of that first round, if you will, of vesicles. And that was a normal release. There was enough there to compete with the non-depolarizer and block it off. And you also had to compete presynaptically to get that positive feedback mechanism to help you displace the next round of vesicles. But that acetylcholine is competing with a lot of things now. The pseudocholinesterase enzyme and the non-depolarizer for thousands of sites. So, that second twitch you hit, the response may not be as much because now you have less acetylcholine vesicles being released. You hit that third twitch, 
same thing because the positive feedback mechanism has been inhibited you see less of a response pre and post synaptically why because you've re you've released less acetylcholine you have less vesicular release due to the presynaptic blockade by the non-depolarizing agent at the nicotinic neuronal receptor and finally you may or may not see a twitch depending on the amount of neuromuscular neuromuscular blockade non-depolarizing that you have on board okay now what if you get zero response with the first twitch what does that tell you okay you hit the you hit the train of four stimulator and now you see one two three four you have absolutely no response zero what does that tell you that tells you that you have such a large amount of non depolarizer in the synapse that the acetylcholine released even the first round is not sufficient to displace the non depolarizer at the motor end plate and get a response and as well the presynaptic nicotinic neuronal receptors are also blocked so you have no release of vesicles because of that non depolarizer blocking the nicotinic neuronal receptor I hope this was helpful. Thanks.